Hey guys, welcome to the 15th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the try, catch, and finally statements. So basically, what the catch does it will, is it will catch an error. So if there's an error with your code, instead of your application crashing, it's just going to catch that error so that your application doesn't crash. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and some sort of code that gives an error. And basically what we're doing right here is just creating a new string array. And inside of our string array, we have two strings, so one and two. And we're trying to access um, string at the index of two. And since computers start counting at zero, we go zero and then one and wait. There is no index, of, there is no string at the index of two. So it's going to throw an error saying it's not there. So when we debug here and click our button, we should get an error and our application will crash. Yep, it says the index is outside the bounds of the array. And that just basically means that you're trying to access um, an element or a string that's not inside of our array. So I'm just going to stop debugging here, just click F6, and yes, I'm going to stop debugging. Alright, so instead of having our application crash, what if we don't want that to happen? That's not good. So we're just going to put a try around this code right here. And basically what it's going to do is it's just going to try this code and if there's an error with it it's going to look for a catch statement so we have to have a catch right here so it's going to write out catch and then um, put two curly braces after that so what it's going to do here is it's just going to try this code and if there's an error with it it's going to jump down to this catch statement and do the code inside of here so instead of the application crashing it's just going to do the code inside of here and we're just going to have a message box show saying there was an error so there was an error. All right, and again, it will only get to this code if there actually is an error with uh, this code right here. So when we debug, we should get that message box because of course there is an error with this code. We're trying to access an element inside of the array that doesn't exist. So yep, we get that message box, there was an error. But if there wasn't an error with our code and we're just trying to access um, the element at the index of zero, then we're not going to get that message box since there isn't an error. So yeah, there's no error. But what if we want to tell the user exactly what the error was? When we uh, ran our code without the try and catch, we got that nice message saying the index is outside of the bounds of the array, so that we sort of know what the problem is. And to get that message, what you're going to want to do is just put two parentheses after the catch. And then inside of here, you're just going to want to write exception and then call it ex. And basically what you're doing right here is creating a new variable, a new exception variable, and you're just calling it ex. And this exception will be equal to the exception that was thrown or the error that was given. So if we want to get the information about that exception that was thrown, we're just going to want to do ex.message. And that's just basically um, that message that is displayed when your application crashes. So we got indexes outside of the bounds of the array, and that just basically means that we're trying to access an element that isn't inside of the array. So if I were to just try and access that uh, string at the index of 2, we're going to get an error because it doesn't exist. And we should get indexes outside of the bounds of the array in the message box since we're getting the message of the exception that was thrown. Yep, indexes outside the bounds of the array. Perfect. So that just gives the person using your application sort of an idea of what's going wrong. And if a user was using your application, you could just easily ask them what the problem was and they could just tell you the message. So you have some sort of an idea of what's wrong with your application. All right, and lastly, we're gonna look at the finally uh, statement. And these go along with try and catch. So if we were to just go right here and type finally, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna do this code inside of this finally statement no matter what. So if there's an error with this or not, it's just gonna jump down to this finally. So we're just going to have a message box show saying um, your code is done. So we're just going to say right here, your code is done. And no matter if there's an error or not, we're going to get this message inside of here. So currently, there is an error with our code. So we're going to, it's just going to jump down here to this catch, and we're going to get the exception. And then after that, finally, it's going to give us this message box. Yep, your code is done. And now if you were to change this so that there's not an error, we just try and access the string at the index of zero, then there's no error with this, but it's still going to do this code inside of the finally right here. 
yep, we get your code is done, even though there wasn't an error. All right, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial on try, catch, and finally. So see you guys.